Are we good? I think this is Twitch, based off what I was reading. Ah, oh, no, I skipped a checkpoint. Damn it. I really wanted to pass him. Damn it. I think I have to win. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, based off what I was reading, I think Checkpoint. this is Twitch. Checkpoint. 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 Landed that. Oh, that was pretty sick. You see that? Oh, checkpoint. That was pretty radical. Doesn't like Twitch doesn't like checkpoint now. Oh, oh I counted. <laughs> I got the checkpoint, that's all that matters. I drive better in this game than in games where you're actually supposed to drive better. Checkpoint. Checkpoint. Oh. Let me. Damn it. Oh no, I didn't count. Checkpoint. 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 Damn it. Fuck you. Bitch. Fuck off. No, that guy passed me. Unacceptable. Checkpoint. 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 Oh. Bitch. Stop it. Why? I'm pretty sure I missed a checkpoint. Checkpoint. Fuck off. Checkpoint. 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 Fuck you! Oh, come on! That's some bullshit. Three, two, one, go. How, how does that work?
Bro, I literally can't see them coming. What do you want me to do? They have the power out of the gate to hit me. But I can't, like, I can't do anything to them. If I bump it and then they move like two feet, they bump it to me, I fly across the entire fucking map. Well, because they want you to destroy the cars instead of racing it. But, like, that doesn't work for me, because I can't do any fucking damage to them. Where the leader is. I don't even see him.
Come on, I made that. I went right for him.
get any attachment. I can't take any of them out, I can't win the race on it, what you want me to do?
I'm done with this. Oh. oh, I just realized it split my VOD, didn't it? Oh, it doesn't matter. Okay, where's Stanley Parable? So I've played this before, um, but I guess this is like an updated version. I, I'm guessing they added stuff. Wow, that's a lot. The current time. Whoops. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor at his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. Was he? And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. Sounds easy. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. All of his co-workers were gone. What? What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, 
he entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, <laughs> and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just yep. to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Looks good. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. I like this picture. Right here. Looks pretty good. Yes. Really, really worth it being here in the room. Yep. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Yes. Really worth it. It is. That's great. I like that beach. Look at this vending machine. At this point, Stanley's obsession with this room bordered on creepy and reflected poorly on his overall personality. It's possible that this is why everyone <laughs> left. Give me a drink. Give me a drink. Stanley sat around waiting for more dialogue, but when a long time had passed and there was no more, he decided that the game was trying to send him a message. <laughs> I like this clock, too. Look at it go. It's a nice clock. But at last, he'd had enough of the amazing no! room and took the first open door on his left to get back to business. Uh, no. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. <laughs> Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you forgot. What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why, I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. Okay. Now listen carefully, this is important. Right. Stanley walked through the red door. Got it. Aha, perhaps you misunderstood. <laughs> Stanley walked through the red door. Got it. Blue door. I still don't think we're communicating properly. Stanley walked through the red door. Mm, blue door. All right, fine, go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop you. You see? There's nothing here. I haven't even finished building this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. Broken rooms, exposed developer textures. I like it. Is this what you had wanted? Yes. Was it worth ruining the entire story I had written out specifically for you? Fuck yeah. Do you not think I put a lot of time into that? Because I did. And in the end, it was all for nothing, because this is what you wanted to see. Yep. Help me here, Stanley. Help elucidate these strange and unknowable <laughs> desires of yours. What would have made this game better? What did you want to see? Vehicles? Skill trees? More blue door. Work with me. You've given me absolutely nothing so far. Tell you what. Let me take a stab in the dark at a new design, and you can give me some feedback. Okay. There we go. A third option. Oh, shit. This already feels leaps ahead of where we were before. Go ahead, Stanley. Take it for a spin. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. Now, tell me about your experience with this new version. Would you say that the game benefited from allowing you more choices? Feel free to be honest. I'm looking for some real critical feedback here. Oh. Aha! You see, I knew I was onto something. Where do these flashes of inspiration come from? How did I know the game needed a third door? Well, it's instinct mostly, a calling in your gut. I really couldn't say where the idea came from, except that I, I felt it in my soul. Right. You can't teach that, Stanley. Don't even try. 
Here, based on the data from your previous playthrough, uh -oh. I've compiled a new version. And to be perfectly candid, I think I've knocked it out of the park with this one. Let's take a look. Oh, shit. There's a leaderboard. Good old Neil. Beat it in two seconds? What a speed run. Whoa. Ah, that's me. <laughs> Why not ask some friends for help? Air, friends left empty. Oof. Only 3% of players just the blue door. God. A dead rat is awful. <laughs> a dead rat is objectively rigged over you. <laughs> Poor dead rat. Oh. oh, it resets. Now, would you say that competitive leaderboard helped you feel motivated to keep walking through doors? Again, honest answers, please. Uh, three. Hey, I nearly forgot. I've got a prototype of a new game I've been working on, and now would be a lovely opportunity to give it some playtesting. Okay. You wouldn't mind taking a look at it, would you? Sure. Perfect. Let me boot it up. Where we got? In oh, this God. game, the baby crawls left towards danger. You click the button to move him back to the right, and if he reaches the fire, you fail. It's a very meaningful game, oh, all about the desperation and tedium of endlessly confronting the demands of family life. I think the art world will really take notice. But of course, the message of the game only becomes clear once you've been playing it for about four hours. Yeah. So why don't you give it four hours of play to make sure it's effective? Be sure to keep notes on your experience. Got it. Heartless bastard. <laughs> you do it because you hate babies or purely to spite me? Because if it's the latter, well, I don't know what to do. I'm completely out of ideas. I can't think of a single thing that might improve the experience for me. I'm not even going to try. I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. It's over. Shit. Thank you for playing. Your input was extremely valuable. Oh, hey, since my game was so awful, why don't we play someone else's game? But there is still. the pain. Let's see. What do we have here? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. This seems like it'll work. Let's give it a shot. Okay. Firewatch? Ah, fascinating. Let's what go! Do you think this game is about, Stanley. What's our backstory? What is our motivation? Hmm. Well, it seems obvious to me that you are meant to play as a creepy man spying on innocent civilians below you from up high in your creep tower. Perhaps wow. for some sort of twisted erotic purpose. Hmm. Yes, that must be it. What a fascinating venture into the experience of total mental depravity. So far, I love everything about this game, Stanley. And it seems there's even more. Come, let's venture outward and see what else is out there. Holy shit, I haven't played Firewatch in forever. That's wild. Oh no. No, 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 it can't be. It is. It's an open world game. Good God, quickly block it off. Damn it! Oh. Not the wall! Oh, goodness, Stanley, what a close call. You nearly wandered off into that... that... Thing, that big open, just wandering around, no right or wrong directions, no path to follow. You can just go in any. Damn you, oh. Trump! Oh, thank heavens we avoided it. We're out of the woods now, Stanley. Okay, I'm going to get us out of here. Let's find yeah. another game. Come on. Preferably something yeah. with walls. Something with nice, big, insurmountable walls. Yeah. 
<laughs> Damn it. Okay. I think this will be just the thing. Firewatch. Oh. Oh my god. Wonderful. See, this is exactly what I had in mind. Just a nice big box for you to run around in. There isn't any possibility that you could get lost here. Now this is game design. Stanley, if you manage to get lost in this game, I will be phenomenally impressed. <laughs> All right, where's the ball? Okay, so what exactly do we do here? Let's see. There are lots of cars here in the back, but obviously there's no racetrack. Okay, I'm seeing that there's a ball of some kind back here. Is this game sports ball? Stanley, I think it's sports ball. It is what sports fun. ball. We shall run the bases and do a touchdown together. <laughs> yes, I think surely we must. Okay, Stanley, here's the ball. Have fun. Where? Yes. 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 Oh, I remember, Stanley. Yeah. Are you doing it? Are you winning? Is this fun? I think Is so. it better than my miserable little story that I work so hard on? Stanley, I have a thought. And I realize I'm not a sportsologist, but if oh. one ball generates a certain amount of raw adrenal pleasure, then surely multiple balls makes for an even more euphoric sports ball! What are you doing? Ah! Stanley, don't do that. I can't follow you there. I can't help you. How will you write a story without me? You can't do it. You know that. Stanley, come back. And ah! Shit. Oh, the light. I wonder what he found. If what he wanted was to be the leading man in his own story, well, perhaps he's gotten it. Down in wherever he is right now. I wonder if he's happy with his choice. And if he's learned the heavy cost that comes with it. He'll understand soon what I was trying to tell him. He needs me. Someone who will wrap everything up at the end to make sense out of the chaos and the fear and the confusion. That's who I am. That is what I mean to this world. Oh, yes. Yes, I'll be back. There's no other way. Once this ends, after it all comes to a close, then I'll be back. The end will be here soon. Very soon. I can wait. Me too. Oh, there it is. Okay, let's try it the correct way this time. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. How to solve a dispute with coworker? Let it bob inside of you, take it out, pass it aggressively, and every coworkers resent coworkers for not supporting you more. The broom closet. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Yes. There was nothing here. No choice to make, 
No path to follow, just an empty broom closet. Yep. No reason to still be here. Uh huh. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. <laughs> Are you, are you really still in the broom closet? Yes. Standing around doing nothing? Why? Because. Please offer me some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. This is my closet now. You do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I don't know, man. I never would have thought to mention it. It's pretty sweet in here. I'm not gonna lie. Maybe to you this is somehow its own branching path. Mm -hmm. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, "Ow." Did you get the broom closet ending? <laughs> the broom closet ending was my favorite. I hope your friends find this concerning. <laughs> Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. <laughs> he probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That or with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> Well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. Right. You're dead. You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. That's probably it. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. They have fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming. Got it. So that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right. When you've done that, just step out into the hallway. Got it. Ah, second player. It's good to have you on board. I guarantee you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. You too? Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm at the mercy of an entire species of invalids. Perhaps there's a monkey nearby you can hand the controls to. A fish? Fungus? Look, you can hammer out the details. I'm not particularly picky. I'll just be waiting for when you're ready to pick up the story again. Got it. It is pretty sweet in here. There's a broom. There's a mop bucket. There's that. There's some cardboard. There's a wrench. There's a film reel. Um, that's no, wire. Yep. Okay. Pretty sweet here. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. The executive bathroom? I got the feeling money's for stealing. Uh, but it's not yours, of course. Boy, it's, that's a lovely purse. Oh my god! I don't exist! Uh... Okay. Oh.
That's just Pokemon music. The elevator doesn't actually move. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, mm. by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Ah! Does this elevator work? Sure does. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Fuck it. The lights rose on well. an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Give me half a yeah, no, right? Now the monsters. Oh shit! Came to life. Fired. Their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building. Stanley's co-workers, the lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. 427, that's me. How many erections played at once? <laughs> Not commercials too. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept ah. it blindly? No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? 
Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? Shit. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Horse up there. Not get in here. Uh -huh. And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. Got it. Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes. He had won. Ah. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. Oh, wow. That was all he needed to know. It was perhaps the only thing worth knowing. Shadow Colossus in the background. Stanley right? stepped through the open door. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation. The immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Uh, could do even. It's a good point. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. New content. Oh, new content? What does that mean, new content? Oh, shit. Wonder, yeah, you're, you make a good point. Hello, and thank you for playing the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Oh. As you may know, the Stanley Parable was a video game released in 2013 on home computers. After receiving critical and commercial success, it was expanded upon in 2022 with the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, a reimagining of the game for consoles and home computers. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe features exciting new content that broadens and expands the world of the Stanley Parable, More delighting game. audiences the world over. 
please step inside and see what thrilling new adventures await in the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Oh, well, this sounds delightful. I'm very excited to see the thrilling new Ultra Deluxe content. Okay, so far it's an elevator. Nothing special yet, but I'm sure it's just the beginning of a mesmerizing <laughs> adventure. Yep. Um, is it broken? <laughs> What's going on here? Should we... Should we be moving somewhere or... or oh, there we go. There we go. All right, finally, at long last, it's on to the new content. I've never been more ready. Let's do it. Hmm. Hmm. I have to say, initial impressions of Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, mostly tedious. It's as if them... Oh, okay. Let's see the content. Give me the content, Stanley. Jump circle. All right. All right. Let's see. It's the jump circle. Oh, yeah. To be jumping. Go close, brothers. Out of jumps. Shit. Is is that it? Surely that's not all the new content. There has to be something else, right? Goodness. Another elevator. Stanley, I have to say, initial impressions of this game are not positive. It's just elevators and jumping. Is this what passes for exciting new content? If this is new content, then I could just read you the whole dictionary. There's 20 hours of new content right there. <laughs> Hell, I could count to 30 trillion. You could put that on the box. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, now with over a thousand hours of new content. And if... Oh, wait. There's more. Very good. Yes. I knew that. Still better than Saints Row, yeah, right? Let's see it. I'm ready for whatever it is. Thank you for enjoying the new content. That's it? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. You <laughs> see, Stanley? This is what happens when greedy video game developers oh. with no respect for their fan base rush a cheap expansion to market for no reason other than to make an easy dollar. <laughs> and don't get me started on the level of craftsmanship that's gone into it. In fact, I'm looking right now at the game's achievements, and it's hard to believe one of them actually says, Test achievement, please ignore. <laughs> what quality assurance department signed off on this? I'm infuriated and I'm offended, and I, I intend to find these people on Twitter <laughs> and hold them personally accountable. <sighs> it's my fault, Stanley. I built up too much anticipation around the new content, I'm afraid. It could never have lived up to such expectations. If you're still with me, why don't we just reset the game and we'll try to get back to what the Stanley parable is really about. No frills, no gimmicks. Just you and me having a great time together like always. What do you say, friend? Oh, shit. This don't look right. Psst. Stanley, come over here. In the vent. I want to show you something. Ah. Okay, you remember how cheap and unsatisfying the new Ultra Deluxe content turned out to be? Well, right. It got me thinking about the past and how much better the Stanley Parable used to be. So I made something special and tucked it away here where the game's developers won't find it. Uh... Just our little secret. Take a look. I call it the Memory Zone. It's where I've been storing all my favorite memories so I can relive the peak experiences of my life whenever I want. Experiences like the launch of the Stanley Parable on PC. You see, Stanley, doesn't the memory zone remind you of how wonderful Stanley Parable was oh, before yeah. it was solid with a cheap re-release? 
Remember back in October of 2013, when the game originally launched? Back then, video games had integrity. Back then, it all meant something. Oh, the waste. 1951. Wow. <laughs> the first dollar. Is that concept art? <laughs> Whoa. It's pretty sick. Oh, shit. Little Stanley. Aw. <laughs> and over here is where I keep reviews of the Stanley Parable. Like this stunning triumph of games journalism, 10 out of 10 from Destructoid.com. Not Destructoid.com. Sterling writes, and I quote, We're so many games that aspire to be more than games end up less than any form of art. Stanley Parable strives and then succeeds to be every game ever created. Did you hear that, Stanley? Every game ever created. That's how grand and all-encompassing the original Stanley Parable was. It was literally every game ever created. It was Skyrim, it was Persona 3, it was all of them, and now it's nothing. It's no games at all. It isn't even the Stanley Parable anymore. It's just a husk now. A lifeless husk with an hour of new elevator content. <laughs> oh, wow. As a rug. Here's another moving passage, oh, this sick. time from GameSpot.com. The Stanley Parable is both a richly stimulating commentary on the nature of choice in games, and one that offers some of the most enjoyable, surprising, and rewarding choices I've ever been confronted with in a game. Nine out of ten. Don't you get it, Stanley? The game was perfect. It didn't need anything else. It didn't need new content. It just needed to be left alone, to spend the rest of time collecting dust in the hallowed hall of beloved video game memories. There he is. Oh, these were simpler times, Stanley. But I wouldn't give to go back to have it all over again. Wait, hang on. I don't recall this part of the memory zone before. What's this? What's down here? Uh oh. Oh no. God no. Stanley, it's a collection of reviews from Steam, <laughs> the online video game distributor. I haven't looked at these in years. I can't even imagine what's been collecting down here. Not Steam reviews. Surely these reviews were glowing as well, weren't they? Oh god. No! <laughs> Honestly, I could not be bothered to play this game to full completion. The narrator is obnoxious and unfunny, with his humor and dialogue proving to be more irritating than entertaining. Unfunny! <laughs> I'm not trying to be funny. Oh, shit. I'm trying to make a serious work of art. 
I suppose I could write up a handful of gags to insert into the Stanley Parable, but the game is already such a densely layered web of profound philosophical insights that I can't even imagine where I'd have the room to stick them. Oh, shit. Hello. Okay, let's see what this one says. While the idea for the game is good, for someone who prefers non-linear games, this preachiness gets annoying fast. Preachy? Stanley? I'm not preachy, am I? You can tell me if I'm preachy. Honestly, you can. Oh, goodness. This is actually quite shocking for me. I, I always, well, to be honest, I had always thought of the game's dialogue as being rather terse to begin with. You can't know how much fluff I cut from the game to get it to feel as light and airy as it... Well, I always thought it did, but maybe it wasn't. Oh dear, what an awful memory to have to hold on to. These black marks are my otherwise unimpeachable track record. Right. I feel like a failure. Like I let these people down. Perhaps the Stanley Parable isn't quite as sterling as I always remembered. Bird. What's this one got to say? Do, 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 do. You constantly have to stop doing anything so the narrator can catch up with his long-winded explanations of what's happening. I wish there was a skip button. A skip button? Well... Well, yes. Yes, I think we can do that. If I'm truly too preachy, then... Then maybe letting you skip ahead for just a moment, surely it couldn't hurt. Not if it means we can strike these negative reviews from the record. Only positive reviews oh, of the Stanley Oh, Oh, God. What's That's going on? Today, and it's always been my motto. I'd do anything for the customer, Stanley. Yes, a skip button we shall have. Oh, Jesus. And here it is. Go ahead and give it a shot. I'll pop you forward in time so that the second my incessant droning starts to bore you with just the push of a button, you'll have zipped right past it. It's what the players have been asking for, and I'm very proud to have delivered. No more listening to me rambling on and on and on. No, 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 no. The Stanley Parable is a game for the people. And if the people want silence, then by goodness, that's what they're going to get. Well, don't sit around waiting for me to shut up. Go ahead and make me shut up. Here, we'll pretend that I've just begun an interminable monologue, and it goes something like this. The story, and the choices, or what have you, and therefore, by becoming it is, so on and so forth, until inevitably, we all until the end of time, at which time, everything all at once, so, now you see, blah, 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 We've eaten too much, and it can't be just yet, no, no, until two... <laughs> oh, you're back, you see? You were only frozen in time for a few minutes, but it was plenty of time for me to deliver a long, rambling monologue full of unnecessary verbal flourishes and lengthy rumination. <laughs> well there, sport. You really did catch me rambling on a bit, didn't you? But that's the power of the button. The minute I start to go off on a thoughtless display of self-absorption, it's right at your fingertips to go poof! <laughs> okay, welcome back, Stanley. Now, I should say that the amount of time the button has been skipping through is becoming longer and longer. That last one was, well, I want to say maybe 30, 45 minutes. It's not unendurable by any means, but it's, well, there's really only so much I can ramble on to myself about. I know, it's shocking, isn't it? But at any rate, I do suggest that we not press the button again. I Stanley! Stanley! Stanley, please don't push the button again! It's been 12 hours! You've just been frozen there! I don't know why the skips are getting longer, but they're... <laughs> oh, Stanley, you're back! You're back! Oh my goodness, I have someone to talk to again. Stanley, I... I think it's been a week. What's that? Two weeks? I've been sitting here all that time, just sitting here, not a single person to speak with. And you'd think that that's just how it's always been, right? Me talking and you saying nothing. Would you think that it's exactly the same as always? Doesn't that feel like what we've already been doing? Me? Oh shit. 
Oh, hello. It's you. You're here again. Welcome. I have had time to think about you and about us and about everything we've been through. I've had so much time. I stopped keeping track after a year. Have you ever sat down in one place and not moved for one entire year? Let me describe it for you. To begin with, there is only regret. There is only the turning wheel of missed opportunities. I felt nothing at all but regret for the longest time, Stanley. Days. Months. I lost... <laughs> I think he's dead. Shit! Smoke alarm batteries. But they didn't understand the game was never meant to be funny. <laughs> it was meant to have a point. It was meant to speak to the human condition. But where are the jokes? Where are the jokes? They bemoaned. They screamed. They gnashed their teeth and said, entertain us. It wasn't enough. They had to leave a pathetic little thumbs down review and make all of their pitiful demands. But then he's talking too much. They said first he didn't entertain us. Now he won't shut up. It's the inconsistency. It's the lack of accountability. <laughs> it's the unwillingness to examine with an uncompromising heart the words that they are speaking into the world. The end is never the end. Oh no. Is never the end 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 is never the end. Oh god. Cool. Where was the door? How did I get in here? Oh. I don't like this one. button. Nope. Oh, shit. Oh. Oh, my God. Shit. Are we okay? All of his co-workers yes. were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. 
Not new, new content. Oh, good. You notice my sign. Yes, I have something very exciting to show you. What now? Is it the Sahara again? Okay, what you got? You see, Stanley, I've been reflecting on the Stanley Parable and about how roundly disappointing this ultra deluxe version has turned out to be. Right. The original Stanley Parable was a landmark, and any new content for it should live up to that legacy. So forget this ultra deluxe nonsense. I say we take it oh. one step even further. Which is why I'm very proud to announce for the first time ever the Stanley Parable 2. Sick! Yes, you see, isn't this far superior to a measly re-release with a few minor additions? Think of all the new territory we'll cover with a fully-fledged sequel. An entirely new experience, built from Taste the ground the up. Why, there are so many possibilities. It could go in so many different directions. This is what fans have truly been asking for. Calling it the Stanley Parable 2 is just so much catchier than Ultra Deluxe, don't you think? I agree. Ultra Deluxe? What does it even mean? But the Stanley two doors. Parable 2, now that's an artistic statement right there. It's future-oriented. It screams progress and innovation and long-term franchising potential. Uh -oh. Now, to be clear, I haven't quite nailed down what exactly the Stanley Parable 2 is going to be, but let's take a look at some of the features I've been developing for it. I figure that if I can loosely organize a handful of interesting concepts, <laughs> then surely the game will sort of naturally spring up around them. It'll all work itself out. Game development is much more of a fuzzy magic than anything scientific or logical, really. Whoa. Here we are. Go on. Try out some of the new features. The button that says the name of the player that is playing the game. Ooh. For the Stanley Parable 2, I asked myself, what do players really want? And of course, the first and most obvious answer is that they want to be individually recognized and validated as people. So with that in mind, my first addition to the game is this button which speaks the name of the person playing the game. Isn't that wonderful? Jim. Sorry, I should have clarified. Right now, the Good button only says the name Jim. But of course, in the final game, this button will say your name, whatever name that is. Here, let's have you role play as Jim to really simulate the full experience of this feature. Just play along. I promise you'll love it. Okay, here we go. Let's take a deep breath, clear your mind, forget whoever you are, and simply become a person named Jim. I want you to imagine yourself living as Jim, sleeping and waking as Jim. Falling in love and being heartbroken as Jim. Seizing all of the world's possibilities as Jim. And as Jim, watching your dreams crumble into dust. <laughs> Do you feel it deeply? Are you really, truly Jim right now? Jim. Whoa, 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 hold on. I wasn't finished setting up the backstory. If you don't properly roleplay as Jim, then you'll never <laughs> understand the impact of this button. Otherwise, it's just a stupid button that says somebody else's name. Okay, we're doing it again, and this time let me finish first. Okay. <clears throat> now, allow yourself to become Jim. Yes. Imagine yourself driving to work as Jim. Yes. Playing frisbee on the weekends as Jim. I'm Jim. Staying up all night for a popcorn and horror movie sleepover as Jim. I'm Jim. Developing a crippling substance addiction as Jim. What? <laughs> Rediscovering yourself through fringe religious groups as Jim. No. And finally, dying a slow death at an old age, surrounded by members of your cult as Jim. Do you feel it in your soul? Are you really, truly Jim right now? 
If so, then please step forward and press the button. Jim. <laughs> yes, you see? What a thrill, what a rush. That was you. The button described you. Do it again, do it again. Jim. Ooh. It hits even harder the second time. If this were the only new feature in the Stanley Parable 2, it would still be worth the money. Yeah. Let's take a break from the gym button. I'm too emotionally drained from all of this personal validation. I do like the gym button. I suppose I could allow only people named Jim to play the Stanley Parable 2. That would actually save me the work of finishing this feature. An epilogue would be fun, wouldn't it, Stanley? Yes, yes, it would go at the end of the... Um, uh, well, we'll figure that out later. Free achievement. Pull the lever. Receive your new achievement. No more steps. Okay. Now here's something special. You remember that broken test achievement that got left in the game on accident? Well, I'm developing a technology to simply give you the achievement. Yes. You see, you'll come to this lever, and when you pull it, the achievement will be given to you. It's a sim- Okay, perhaps I should have clarified. This is technology that will exist. Right now, the achievement is still fully broken. I'm not a wizard, Stanley, but I guarantee it, Give it will to be me. fixed in the sequel to at last satisfy the hordes of ravenous fans all over the world who have been uproariously demanding this feature. Gamers, we hear you. Give it. And I promise Give it. it will happen. Give it. Give it. Suing. What else? What other exhibits haven't we seen yet? Not the jump circle. You know what? Let's bring the jump circle back for Stanley Parable 2 as well. It's a... Oh, wait. You already spent all your jumps the first time we saw the jump circle. Hmm. Oh, well... I suppose it can just be a nice decorative piece then. Collectibles? Ah, collectibles. Now it's a real video game. In the Stanley Parable 2, you'll run around gathering up these miniature Stanley figurines. And what's truly innovative is that there will be no reward for collecting all of them. <laughs> I don't want to stifle the intrinsic joy of watching a number go up. You simply collect all of them, and then you move the hell on with your unremarkable life. Nice! God, it really is the worst when you collect everything in a video game and then they give you a big fancy reward for it. Absolutely tragic. It's doors now. Oh wait, did I come from here? Oh yeah. The infinite hole. Ah. Okay, where is the exit? I think I've seen everything. Oh, 
Oh, goodness. Um, Stanley, uh, this is fairly awkward. A while, brother. I hate to do this, but before you leave, you really should go to the bucket exhibit. You see, there's a surprise I was going to spring on you later, and it involves the bucket. And I really do hate to break the illusion, but it's important that you go see the bucket, okay? Okay. All right, I'll get out of your hair now. Fine. Where's the bucket? Okay, I'll be honest, I haven't yet decided on this one. I think that in the new version, the office could use a bit of decoration, like balloons. But I'm undecided on Get Well Someday and Happy Twelfth Birthday. Which would you go with? You know, sometimes when you solicit another person's opinion, it makes you realize that you knew which one you actually really wanted all along. Get Well Someday <laughs> it is. Or actually, maybe I should have gone with... No. No, I've made my decision. We're moving on. How's it going, Conrad, James? Stanley, wow. here's an idea that I'm truly fond of. It's never been done before in a video game. This is, in fact, a hole that you can fall down forever. That's right. Infinite falling. You can fall until the end of time, if you like. A stunning leap forward for video games as a medium. Bye, have a good time. You see, isn't it wonderful? One of my more ingenious concoctions, if I do say so. Now then, since you've gotten to see the infinite hole, you can press the teleport button to pop back up to the top, and we can continue onward. Hmm. Now, I don't mean to be a bummer, but I do recommend you use the teleport button to go back to the top. Maybe do it on the sooner rather than later spectrum of things. Okay, Stanley, I don't know quite how to say this tactfully, but it's possible that I slightly exaggerated the infinite nature of the hole. Is it a very, very deep hole? To be certain it is. It's an extremely deep hole. I don't want anyone to say that it isn't an astonishingly deep hole. It is. Is it infinite? Well, that sort of depends on your definition of infinity. Uh -oh. From one perspective, the infinite is merely philosophical in nature. It's more of a... Oh. Okay, well, good for you. You found the bottom of the hole. You found me out, Stanley. I'm a liar and a cheat, and you're <laughs> so clever. Look, I think the issue here is just that you're unusually fascinated by falling. What normal person actually wants to fall? New mug! I figured the hole was as deep as anyone would actually need. Don't you put this on me. Maybe you're the problem. <sighs> Uh, things got a little heated there. I think we both said some things we didn't mean. But it's for, I played the original just version, yeah. put all this behind us and agree to just call the whole mostly infinite? If that works for you, sure. then go ahead and press the teleport button to warp up to the top of the hole and we can move on. I'll just be up here when you're ready. Great. Now, I'm very excited to show you even more of my ideas for the sequel. Oh, for heaven. Yay! I was right. The problem is you. The problem is that you like holes too much. Not normal. A normal person would have said, yep, that's an infinite hole right there. Goes on forever till the end of time. Don't need to see it all, but not you. Oh, no, 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 no. You have a weird sort of... Oh. Oh. 
Did the hole seem even shorter to you this time? Yeah. I couldn't help but feel like you spent a little less time in there than you did before. I mean, admittedly, uh, the weather didn't make an infinite hole, but I didn't think it was that not infinite. Well, I suppose once again there's nothing to do here. If you decide you've had enough of the hole, you can hit the teleport button and come join me up above. Had enough? I'm positively thrilled. Gosh, how could I have guessed? You're back in the hole. If this starts to become a thing where... Wow. Okay. Yes. I'm starting to become extremely certain that the hole is not only not infinite, but that it's growing steadily less and less infinite. Yeah. I suspect that I'm starting to hit the point where it's no longer feasible to call the hole infinitely deep, even by the lax overall standards for accountability and marketing. <laughs> What's going on here? Stanley, I have no explanation for the uncertain nature of the hole's length. Here, let's try something. Let's pop back up to the top, and we'll see if it gets any shorter. Well, there it is. Oh. The shame of my lie has come to haunt me. How is this still appealing to you? I know you're obsessed with holes, but at this depth, I just can't see this scratching the itch. Oh, who am I to judge? You just do whatever it is you're here to do and hit the teleport button when you're ready to move on. Hmm. Is the, um, teleport button not working? No, it's broken. You sure? Yeah. Well, I mean, I really don't have an explanation. It was working just a moment ago. Try it again. Still nothing? Well, I suppose... I, I suppose there is one thing I can do to fix this. I'm out. Uh, Goodbye, Stanley. No. You couldn't bear to be away from the hole, and now you'll get more time with it than you could ever have asked for. It's a win for everyone. You get to be with the hole, I get to do literally anything else. Take care, Stanley. I hope you and the whole have a wonderful rest of eternity together. You bitch. You bitch. Uh... Uh... The hall? Hey, this music sounds familiar.
Stanley? 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 Ah! Oh, good, you're awake. It seems you had sort of dozed off there, <laughs> drifting away into dreamland. But we can't have that, Stanley, because this hole is just so darn fascinating that I want you to be wide awake for every second of it. You don't want to miss a single moment. So how about if I just pop in from time to time and wake you up to keep you really, truly focused on the hole? From the looks of things, you and I will have many, many years here in this hole, and I'm looking forward to all of them. Stay alert, Stanley. I'll be back. Toodle pip. Yeah, not again. Oh. Oh. Here we are. Go on. Try out some of the new features. Ah, the bucket. A common complaint of the Stanley Parable was that it was confusing and paradoxical that it engendered a chaotic sense of reckless despair in those who played it. Well, I am happy to say that after much consideration, I've engineered a clever solution to this fundamental problem with the game. Earth. It's the Stanley Parable oh. Reassurance Bucket. You see, Stanley, anytime you're holding the bucket, a sense of calm and ease will fill your mind and your heart. It's true. As long as you hold onto the bucket, the many disorienting contradictions of the Stanley Parable will feel perfectly normal and perhaps even comforting. You may even come to long for the gentle embrace of jarring cognitive dissonance while the bucket is in your arms. And to be honest, it's a much more convenient solution for me than actually redesigning the game to be less uncomfortable. Can you imagine what a pain in the ass that would be? Yes, the bucket is the perfect solution. Come on, give it a try. <laughs> Can you feel it? Uh. The glow of comfort, even in the face of crushing despair, must already be sweeping through your body. And in fact, can I say that I do believe the bucket lends you an air of charisma as well? I think that just holding it has made you the slightest bit more attractive as a person. The benefits of the bucket seem to go on and on, don't they? All this and more await you in the Stanley Parable too. Great. Does anyone give out awards for most enjoyable bucket in a video game? That really should be an award if it isn't already. I'm enjoying the bucket. There's the exit. So, Stanley, what do you think? Do you like all of the new features? Yes, I know it's not exactly clear yet how exactly these features will come together as one single coherent video game, but I can feel it in my soul. It's going to work. There's definitely a good game in there somewhere. Say, let's do an experiment. I'll arrange these new features together, and we'll see whether or not it coheres into a meaningful gameplay experience. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Are you ready? Here it is. I give you the Stanley Parable 2. What? Um, well, um, I mean, there's potential here, right? It's sort of... Okay, never mind. The hall. Hold on. Let me do a different arrangement. Oh. Okay, yes. Yes, this is much better. I feel good about this. Here we go. 
version two. Two holes. <sighs> Who am I kidding, Stanley? This isn't a coherent video game at all. It's a lot of gags. And I do very much enjoy creating gags, but they don't add up to anything. I wanted more than anything to create a sequel that would capture all the magic of the first game. I wanted fans to love it. No matter how good these gags are, they wouldn't stand on their own. They would need the structure and the gameplay of the original. Wait, maybe that's it. I can take the original Stanley Parable and simply, well, insert a few of my new features into it. Peacefully, of course. With respect. With care for the vision and integrity of the original game. Would it possibly work? I suppose it could. But it would need a really, really tremendous title screen. It would. A title screen that says with bold and uncompromising conviction, this is the Stanley Parable 2. Let me see if I can whip something up. <laughs> All right, perfect. Go ahead. Take a look. Wow. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was That's employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, oh. telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Mm. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up <laughs> to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits Whoa. and regained his senses, he got up for from his desk and time. stepped out of his office. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Bucket! Stanley picked up the bucket. <laughs> Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Still no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find answers. Oh, Stanley, can you feel it? The broom closet. It wants the bucket. You can feel that, can't you? The aura of jealousy? It's as clear as day. This broom closet believes it deserves the bucket. It does. I can really feel it now. It's a bucket. It belongs in a broom closet. That's what the broom closet is trying to say here. It's supposed to go with the other cleaning supplies. Good for you, Stanley. Don't give in. Don't hand over the bucket. I know how hard it must be, given the pressure that the broom closet is putting on your shoulders right now, but you have to be strong. Okay. This is your bucket. This is your companion and lifelong friend. You can't hand it over. Oh, no. We're getting into name calling now, it seems. Is this how low the broom closet has sunk that it has to resort to this stream of petty insults simply in order to get you to hand over the bucket? Stanley, I never liked this broom closet for a variety of reasons, but even this is worse than I had imagined. And wait, 
Now the broom closet has the gall to imply that you and the bucket are not truly deep and lasting friends. <gasps> That your relationship is purely superficial and convenient? <gasps> that your life is so banal and meaningless <sighs> that you'd feel the same sort of kinship towards any inanimate object <sighs> which happened to lay in your path in an even partially enticing manner? <sighs> never. Go on, Stanley. Lay into it. Fuck you, really broom tell closet. the broom closet off for its demeaning comments. Eat Expand my ass. on the wide variety of experiences you and the bucket have shared together. I love this bucket. Go through each of them point by point. I put my dick in this bucket one time. It was great. the rich emotional landscape of your feelings for the bucket as they have changed and evolved over the years. Yeah. Let him have it. Fuck you. Bitch. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire, if not for the soothing presence of the bucket. Even now, in his darkest of hours, did the bucket's warmth and guiding light pierce the dark clouds of confusion and chaos. It would be with him, always. The bucket would. And he knew it. The two of them were inseparable. At this point, Stanley was so absorbed in the tender spiritual connection he shared with the bucket that he didn't notice the keypad behind the boss's desk. Nor in his bliss of simply being near the bucket did he have any notion that the pin number for the keypad was 2845. But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? <laughs> Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. I believe so. Oh! You found one of them. One of the miniature Stanley figurines. Remember, no reward for collecting all of these. Only the intrinsic pleasure of a job well done. You can't buy that sort of happiness, Stanley. God knows I've tried. So... I implore you to savor each and every moment you come across one of these beautiful figurines. The elevator raced downward, plummeting towards an unknown fate. It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. Soothing him, comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be all right. The bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. Thank you, bucket. Stanley and the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read, Mind Control Facility. Lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the Bucket both wondered to themselves. The monitors jumped to life, and Stanley nearly dropped the Bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being mm. videotaped, monitored like guinea pigs. The bucket had never seen anything like this, and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, reassuring it that everything would be fine. Was the bucket under the mind control facility's influence as well? Had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do? What kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? That's a good question. These questions raced furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. <laughs> no! He screamed into the bucket. He couldn't <laughs> accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! He squeezed the bucket tighter. His one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except for the bucket. 
But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he and the bucket would dismantle the controls for good. Two best friends, Stanley and the bucket, up against the world. They high-fived in a really cool way, and the bucket made a sassy comment about taking down the system. Stanley and the bucket waited in blackness. Was it over? Yes, they had done it. Let's go. Stanley and the bucket had defeated their greatest and darkest enemy, freed themselves from the tyrannical grip of the evil mind control machine. Freedom was now mere moments away. Excitedly, the two of them began to discuss the kind of life they wanted to live once they stepped through this massive door. The bucket wanted to learn to roller skate. Stanley wanted to sneeze in every country on Earth. <laughs> Both of them wanted to begin watching a movie, any movie, but then stop it halfway through and begin watching it in reverse from the end. True, it was a simple life they envisioned, but it was one they'd lived together, with one another to lean on, to trust, to support, and... Ah. Uh. What? Wait. What was happening? Why had the door stopped? Was Stanley and the Bucket not about to be freed? An unbearable silence filled the room lingering in uncertainty until finally the truth hit stanley square in the face this building did not want the bucket to leave even the facility Shit. itself recognized the incredible calming presence of the bucket needed the soothing warmth of the bucket would go to any lengths not to part with the bucket no 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 stanley can't leave this place not while he has such a precious bucket in his arms not while this building has anything to say about it. Stanley realized he would never again leave this very room. But at least, at least he has the bucket. To be trapped eternally in darkness isn't really so bad, Stanley thought to himself. As long as I have my bucket with me, right? I'll be okay, won't I? Stanley gulped. Very soon now, he was about to find out. Oh no. Stanley lifted the bucket into his arms, and a wave of comfort. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Uh. uh oh. Oh, Stanley, can you feel it? The broom closet. It wants the bucket. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire if not for the soothing presence of the bucket. Even now, but Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. I think I know what we have to do. We have to escape. Stanley and the bucket walk straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Nope. 
Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley and the bucket would both meet a violent death. The door behind them was not shut. Stanley and the bucket still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley and the bucket were knowingly walking forward into a very painful death for each of them. We did a bucket. Ooh. It's okay. Oh God. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley and the bucket inched closer to their demise, Stanley reflected on how meaningless the bucket's warmth and comfort had turned out to be. To be sure, it puts the mind and the soul at ease to embrace the bucket, but what use is a sense of ease when you're about to be crushed to death? This is what Stanley thought to himself, and he sort of kicked himself for wasting so much time carrying a bucket everywhere. <laughs> Farewell, Stanley. Oh. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley and the bucket were led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, the bucket's life came to an end as it was crushed violently to death. Oh. It was a shame, the death of such a magnificent bucket. It's true that all buckets are radiant in their own way, but this one stood above the rest. It was a glorious bucket to behold. Like a bucket. Good lord. Can you see how arrogant it was for Stanley to take a bucket like this and to claim it for his own? Can you see the hubris that blinded him? Can you see that the bucket is Earth far bucket. more noble than Stanley will ever be in his short life? No man can own a bucket, and certainly not a bucket as dazzling to behold as this one. It is man who should kneel before the bucket. Oh no. Oh. But there is something we can do. Something we can do together, you and I, that will right this terrible wrong. Let Stanley die. Let him be crushed by the machine. Don't reset the game. Don't give him another opportunity to run off with another beautiful bucket. We can save the world's buckets from their treatment as tools and implements if only we let Stanley die together. The bucket shall take its place as ruler, as leader, as commander of a new world, a new vision. Do we do it? I think so. All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay, I don't have to take the bucket. The sequel is now blocked. All right. That'll be that for now. So, uh, I should take those three games off the request list. I don't know if you already did it for your list still. Uh, let me see. So, you did? What are we at now? Let's old school runescape. 
and Ink for Madness. And Stanley Parable Deluxe Edition. 96, damn. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, we went to day four. About four and a half hours. Follower count is 4874. I am not sure if anything happened. Yeah, no issues. Uh, all right, let me see who's live and I'll raid somebody. By the way, stream might be late tomorrow, since I'm going to be watching the pay-per-view. It might be late and short. We'll see. But don't be surprised if it is. For those of you who are watching the pay-per-view tomorrow, I hope you enjoy it. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed the stream today. For those of you guys who don't know, I stream every single day. So, I'll be right back on here tomorrow. I'll see you guys then. Good night, guys.